I think I think a lot of engagement needs to be done with uh, with the young Muslims, mm -hmm. uh, along with the communities. So, for example, the Amdia Muslim community and our youth association. We've got about seven thousand members in the UK all over, and we do a lot of uh, working with the communities. For example, we have blood donation sessions from within our mosques, so it's developing a link with the community. We do tree planting, so we're taking young kids to tree planting, developing a link with Britain. And uh, just recently, we've got uh, our youth planting poppies within the tower moat. So all of these things are happening, and it's, uh, I can quite sincerely say that we don't have a problem of extremism within our community, and it's uh, a very large community of, uh, of Muslims. Do you think it would be enough? Do you think maybe more could be done in the, at home? Um, of course, more can always be done. Um, you know, people need to be ensuring that their kids are, have uh, the right environment at home as well as outside, uh, because really the children are affected by their friends. And that environment is what creates them. If parents don't look after the external environment that's influencing them, then they could easily fall prey to extremism. I mean, everyone, you work a lot with young people, you work at university societies, and this is where sometimes a lot of this radicalisation can happen. We've got kids who are supposed to go to university suddenly travelling abroad. Um, what do you think could be happening at that time of their life? Well, so far, happily, no student has actually gone out there and fight. I mean, to fight, actually. From, what, from our research, what, what things we've seen is that there are people who are either are professionals or they're people who are younger people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot about the great work that these societies do on campus to actually engage people in their student unions, their other societies, Societies, charity week, maybe, maybe that's sort of what the web promotes to say. Get yourselves involved in that safe space environment and really uh, throw yourself in the deep end. I mean, the thing that I feel as well, that's just another point I was, I was thinking of that a lot of these people do tend to come from very socially deprived backgrounds. For example, one thing that we've noticed is a direct link between that sort of apathy, where they don't feel that there's no buy in into their the society, they feel alienated from society because of their circumstances. So they look for an escape. If you will. So I, I, the argument that of radicalization on campus and universities is irrelevant because so far no student has gone out there. One thing we're, we're arguing and we're articulating for is that we need the security services, the police, and also civil society to allow the security to do its own job. It need, we need safe spaces in our mosques. We need imams and scholars to actually feel confident to speak very openly on really difficult issues. Because I think a lot of there's, there's a climate of Muslim community where if we do discuss concepts of fighting abroad, uh, state and, and, and faith reconciliation, that they will be clamped down by whether it be prevent or the Home Office or even the police force. So I think it's really important that people do feel comfortable to have a safe space in their communities to have a frank discussion. Otherwise, we'll never achieve some sort of conclusion. I mean